fine fungal flesh ranchers. It's Adrian Reed. It's Samantha Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms. Also fungal flesh ranchers. I really like I, mushrooms are meaty. What can I say? I just I like the fungal flesh more than I like, you know, mushrooms or thinking of them as a vegetable. Anyways, um, <clears throat> well, this week has been interesting. It's been kind of a doozy. Um, we have, well, golly, we've had family members go in the hospital. They're fine, apparently. Um, they're out of the oven now. We've had um, interesting drop-offs and restaurant sales, but also pickups and restaurant sales. We've had, I don't even know, Samantha is obviously doing lab work, so she can't actually help me stumble my way through the beginning of this video. Um, <laughs> but uh, I thought for this week, guys, we would just go over the difference between uh, pressure canners, sterilizers, and autoclaves. Um, <clears throat> these are almost entirely uh, steam sterilization devices that we're going to be talking about. We're not going to be discussing anything uh, as far as like dry heat. Um, so I'm not going to be talking, you know, anything about kilning or uh, kiln autoclaves or the hot air autoclaves. Um, which I don't even know if those are technically autoclaves or not. I would have to check that out. But the three main ones are pressure canners, um, which are typically like your Prestos. Um, sterilizers, much what you see right there behind me. Let me see if I can actually get... There you go. Sterilizer. It's an All-American 75X. It's the electric model. I do suggest if you're going to get one of those just right off the bat, go with the 240 model, not the 110. The 110 takes forever to heat up. Um, though the 110 is still very nice. And then we have autoclaves, uh, which I will have here. Uh, Andrew, put B-roll over, please. Um, uh, the autoclave that we have is a 150 liter model from SH Scientific. Um, we, I highly recommend you buy it from Mushroom Media Online. Seth has got a great relationship with them and can get you uh, quick shipping and usually the best price. Um, <clears throat> so let's just check out these three really quick, shall we? Yeah, since we're in the lab, let's first of all, let's talk sterilizers. There you are. So sterilizers, much like the All-American here. Again, it's the 75X model. Uh, I'm just going to put you back on the tripod. <laughs> That's this. cruel. I told him not to put you in there. Yeah, she said, don't cook our audience. <laughs> uh, the sterilizers. So, <clears throat> All-American sterilizers are fantastic uh, for one reason, really. They hold pressure for the, the best that I've seen out of the autoclaves or the pressure canners. Which means when you're trying to make something like, like pre-made slants, it really helps for these things to be able to cool. Oh, I got a little bit of water in my... Um, really helps for these things to be able to cool under pressure. Otherwise, they can boil out. So I have found that Pressure canners, you can absolutely make these. Um, the autoclaves, it's hit or miss for me right now, and I'll, I'll kind of go in uh, in a later video on how I do uh, pre-made slants. But when you're working with pre-made slants or um, really agar work in general, I find that the sterilizer is the best unit to go with. It holds the pressure, which means you don't have a lot of agar boil, boil off. Um, it also has a little bit finer tune. It takes, for me, they take way longer than what my autoclave takes to, to sterilize anything. Um, and I do sterilize my liquid culture in, in the, uh, the big autoclave. Uh, I use my All-American primarily just for, for agar now. And <clears throat> it allows me to get the temperature exactly where I want it. It gets the Erlmeyer flasks um, where they can cool under pressure um, right about to the point that they're easy to handle and still easy to pour but still hot and free-flowing. The slants I just leave in overnight and allow them to cool. Another thing that you can go with is something like these media bottles. Um, it's just literally called a media bottle and 
and you can buy them, I think, in two liter, one liter, you know, this is a liter here. Um, I really like these as well. The flask I find a little easier to pour, but one of the things we started doing is we take our uh, media flasks and <clears throat> media bottles and cook our agar in there and then just let it sit overnight, completely cools in the autoclave. And then we have these sitting on the shelf with agar in them until the day that we're ready to pour plates. In which case we just stick this back in the autoclave and just heat it up for a little while. I don't even fasten the thing, I just use it to warm this up. Once this is warmed up for a couple of hours, and it's, it's then ready to pour. And it's still sterile because it's, it's kept in a, a bottle that maintains that sterility. Um, <clears throat> That's pretty much it on, on the sterilizers. The, the big difference, the big difference between a pressure canner and a, the sterilizer is really this little stopcock right here. That holds pressure, whereas the, um, the, the rocker that it sits on and rocks, that is, uh, it, it, it bleeds off pressure. It never seals completely. What you're doing is continually adding heat so that it's always got pressure being added to it. It's always got heat um, and thereby pressure being added. So really, this is the difference between the canner and the sterilizer. Interesting little tidbit, by the way. You can buy the All-American canners and then buy the stopcocks. And what that will allow you to do is you just swap it out. So right now, there's been apparently a big shortage on the sterilizers. Just buy the pressure canners, like another 30 bucks or so, you buy the stopcock, you swap them out. You can always turn this thing back to a canner if you want, um, or you can turn it into the sterilizer. Just, uh, it does help to have, make sure that the uh, uh, hose comes with it. But yeah, that's what I have found to be the best way to get a sterilizer right now. Uh, up next, let's just talk about autoclaves, shall we? This, my friends, is an autoclave. And this particular autoclave model comes from SH Scientific out of South Korea. <coughs> I have very purposely avoided a Chinese model. Not that I've used a Chinese model. I just figure why not support manufacturing elsewhere. So anyways, the point is, plus I like JH out of SH Scientific. He's very helpful and his customer service is really good. Again, you can buy these through Mushroom Media online and still get that customer service um, and oftentimes get the best shipping prices through Seth. So, and it will save you some because this is, this is, Kind of an expensive thing to ship. Anyways, this autoclave is 150 liters. I can hold uh, 23 five pound bags in the 14, was it 14A bags, uh, 14T. The five pound grain spawn bag that, that holds, um, that's got the 0.2 micron filter patch. Sorry about the construction noise. They're making baggers down there right now. Anyways, the point is, this thing can cook those 23 bags in 50 minutes at 130 C. It's 266 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that is the power of autoclaves. Autoclaves are usually able to do much higher temperatures, which means faster reduced time cycles. So this thing is why I was able to lower my price down on my bulk spawn packs. Um, you know, where it's $25 a bag, which is still quality spawn with some of the best genetics on the freaking market and um, you know uh, one of the best prices including shipping out there so remember that um, speaking of let's check in with our sponsor for this video really quick
It was me. I sponsored this video, get it? That's gonna be happening a lot more, guys. Um, I offer you guys a lot of free information. I'm only just gonna ask for a very short period in each video for you guys to uh, support my work, but not just support my work, support yours by getting the best products, the best genetics out there. <clears throat> Anyways, back to autoclaves. When it comes to these autoclaves, I freaking love this thing. I do my liquid culture in it. You're not supposed to do glass in it. So what I do instead is I place my jars, I place my jars inside of unicorn bags. I use the XLS-A bags, which are the 0.5 micron. I don't even close them, I just fold them over. I've had jars bust in this uh, too, since I've been using this thing. That's after probably hundreds of jars at this point. Um, and those two jars that busted, they didn't go anywhere, the liquid didn't go anywhere, they, everything stayed in the bag, and that's exactly the point. Glass can damage this thing if it busts in there and gets and scratches one of the sensors, but as long as you have that contained, it seems to work really, really well. I can't promise you that it will maintain your warranty, uh, but, you know, <laughs> it will help you produce a lot of work in a very short time. Um, <clears throat> The real big difference in this is is the level of heat that it can attain and the level of pressure that it can attain. Autoclaves are, strictly speaking, um, maybe not strictly speaking, but are, are really for very good sterilization practices. Pretty much the best sterilization you're going to be able to get. Um, which is why I can reduce my time from two and a half hours for four bags of grain, like I used to do in my All-American, to 50 minutes for 23 five pound bags um that's because i'm able to go up in temperature and that this thing i mean this thing gets the temperature so so quickly so this is probably the best sterilizer out there but i will say it maintains pressure by amping up the heat and then sometimes it's got to kick out a little steam out of this hose you've got a little exit hose for your steam it scares people sometimes i like to put it by the door so when people are walking by sometimes it goes Psst at them won't hurt anything but it scares the crap out of new people um, that said it's uh it, it's it's very easy to um uh i'm sorry it's, yeah it's very easy for that when it bleeds off that pressure for your agar to boil out so i have been able to do agar in those media bottles that actually close up you know really well but as far as um doing an earlier minor flask i have not had a single successful run so not the best thing if you're trying to do agar my slants like i said um i'll do i'll show you how i do those in boat and all my units later but I, I do wrap those up in a unicorn bag but my success rates maybe like 20 percent and that's just not acceptable for me the all americans are much better on that so this bleeds off pressure kind of in a similar way that the pressure canners do uh it just does a lot better job of sterilizing and sterilizing quickly uh, with that, let's go talk pressure canners. Ha! Tricked ya! You thought I was gonna put you back in the autoclave. <laughs> and I didn't. Pattern recognition broken. Okay, so, <laughs> this is a pressure canner. You may recognize this from your mother or your grandmother's kitchen, or if you've been growing mushrooms for any amount of time, probably recognize it from posts or even that really crazy meme where somebody exploded uh, their oven. Go, just go. Look at her. So, <laughs> she got me all flustered and tickled now. Um, the main thing that you can see on these pressure canners, you're probably used to that sound if you use one, is this rocker right here. I'll pull focus. That sits on top. I have it set on 15 PSI. In fact, I have used this weight so much and for so long. It is now corroded and gunked up to the point with lime and calcium and everything else from our tap water. That this weight is 15 PSI, maybe 16 PSI for all I know with the added weight. But those weights are fused together now. These Prestos, uh, whereas if I took the pot out of Mile American, I could fit somewhere between four and six five pound bags of uh, grain spawn in there. I can usually only fit four in here. 
um, and I really have to pack it full of water to make it last the two and a half hour run. Even with this weight barely hissing, that's what you want with these things, it's just the weight barely hissing. Now, canners are great for starting out, I think. Um, they even have a purpose. I have like four of these things as backups. Um, we use them in the kitchen still occasionally, though even now we use, uh, what's that thing called, Samantha? The Ninja. We use a Ninja like Instant Pot kind of thing um, to cook in mostly now. So these really are largely defunct and, and, and just sit as a backup for me with some hot plates in case one of my machines goes down. Um, downsides to these are that you got to babysit them, you have a limited amount of room, they don't hold pressure, um, they're going to suck air in so you're going to either want this to cool down in front of a HEPA filter which can also oftentimes make it cool down too fast, lose pressure too fast, and cause the agar to bubble out, liquid culture to bubble out, boil off rather. Um, <clears throat> or you can put something on top of them like uh, an alcohol soaked rag and or bleach soaked rag or something like that. And as the air goes through it, it acts as a filter slash sanitizing uh, agent there. You basically sanitize the cloth and the cloth acts as the filter. And that allows the air that comes back in to be clean. I find that it's best to do that to let it cool down a little while and then put it in front of the flow hood for it to finish. Yeah, that's a more interesting background. So, these pressure canners, what you really have um, for me is they, they do a lot of duty. They, they pull a lot of load for being such a small and fairly cheap device, even now. I mean, when I first got mine, you know, they were 40, 50 bucks for a 23 quart Presto. I don't even know if you can find Prestos anymore. I think most of them now are Miros. Um, but that's, and they're usually over $100. That said, 100 bucks, and this thing is, is able to reliably produce you agar, liquid culture, grain spawn, even fruiting blocks, if you're doing a small number of fruiting blocks. Typically, bulk pasteurization is still gonna do you better on uh, fruiting blocks. Uh, let's see. The main thing on these is you gotta care for them a little bit more. The silicone rings need to make, you need to make sure that they are, um, every three or four runs on these, we would silicone, I mean, uh, Vaseline the silicone band inside. And then they have, they have these little safety plugs. You always wanna make sure that those are fitting well. They can dry rot. So sometimes you want to lubricate those too, though sometimes you don't want those lubricated because otherwise they might they might blow out a little easier. So go easy on that. But read the instructions and follow the instructions more than my advice. That's what I'm truly trying to say. That's really the big three differences. I mean, that's really the big, three big different sterilization methods open to most people at a, a smaller sized farm uh, to moderate sized farm. Even with that big autoclave, unless I had a few of those units, which you know, you're talking $5,000 for the autoclave, uh, $1,200 for the All-American, $100 for the Presto, um, huge price differences, each one a big step up. Each one doing really a, a, being able to specialize in a job. I like, if you can ideally have all three on your farm, have all three. If you're just starting out and you don't know how long you're gonna be doing this, go with your pressure canners. If you've been doing this for a while or you know that you're gonna do it and you're gonna be doing a lot of agar in particular, go with the All-Americans. If you're gonna be doing just primarily the liquid culture, fruiting blocks, and grain spawn, then go with the autoclave, and if, especially if you're gonna go with a lot of those. Again, you're gonna be probably better suited economically, at least in the beginning. You know, I, I can build a, a trough pasteurizer for about 600 bucks. Um, and that'll do anywhere from 100 to 170 12 pound blocks uh, per run. Whereas that autoclave, I could get about 10 12 pound blocks in there. And granted, I probably could just run those over and over again, but I have more issues with popping of the bags um, and uh, contamination on feedback, whatever these, ba these bags, they'll create little micro tears and stuff in them from the pressure change. So again, the pasteurization to me is better at that stage, at least until I can afford a huge autoclave that I can control the uh, pressure, the, the, the off pressuring and the, the, you know, the buildup of the pressure. So, uh, let's see. I really, with that y'all, you know, 
I'm just going to try to give you guys these weekly updates. This was something that popped up for me. So when I asked the question, she can't help herself. She knows I have bad ADD, yet she does it anyways. <laughs> Do what? Maybe I have it too. <laughs> uh, she's definitely got ADD too. As well. Not like the second version. It doesn't matter. Anyways. The, these. Oh my gosh. That really broke my train of thought. <laughs> Where was I? Who am I? What am I doing? My wife flirts with me, guys. It really messes with my world. I would be emperor of the world. You all should thank Samantha. Or I would own this world if she did not distract me so. I really can't remember what I was going with that. Do you remember what I was talking about? I really am, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, off kilter here. Yeah, anyways, I'll probably go back while I'm editing this, I'll be like, oh, it was stupid, you never finished that thought. So, oh, I was saying that this came up to me in a question, um, and I'm really hoping that uh, Seth from Mushroom Media Online can post this on, because I know he gets that question a lot. Maybe he can post this on his website so you guys can see a quick explanation uh, of how things go. Uh, this is just kind of a weekly update going forward. This is going to be something that we're going to be doing as Samantha and I are at the helm again. We have zero employees at the moment. Um, and we're wanting to stay it that way for till about March or so at least. Come March I'm probably going to be hiring someone to come in and at least come in and do you know, a lot of the bulk work of what we've got to do. So with these weekly updates I want each weekly update to not just be like a Hey guys, this is what we're doing, this is what we're facing, though I want you to experience that. Especially any of you who are getting into mushroom farming, you should see, hopefully, 52 videos this year, my ups and my downs. But I also, at that time, I want some like helpful tips and tricks and things like that going in for you guys. And so I hope this, this quick explanation of autoclaves, uh, sterilizers, and canners does you well. If you have any other questions, please put them below. If I'm wrong, please put it below. And, uh, oh, Samantha, I forgot to get anything wrong. Um, every video I try to get something wrong so somebody will correct me. They probably won't watch till the end of the video, though, so. Don't throw stuff around. Don't throw stuff around, there you go. Uh, don't pick it up off the floor and then put it on here. If you pick anything up off the floor in the lab, Put your glove in the trash and get a new glove. <laughs> Anyways, guys, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, uh, please, if you enjoyed all this content. If you didn't, please hit subscribe so that you can, you know, tell me how wrong I am every video. And uh, <laughs> uh, at the same time, uh, make sure to check out this week's sponsor, you know, uh, us. And, and check out the website for some cool stuff. We got some really cool strains coming out. Uh, I want to talk real quick before I end the video. <coughs> going forward, we've got a new plan for how we're going to open stuff up. We're going to do a wild mushroom page, and basically anything we find in the wild, as we're testing it, we're going to make it available to you guys. There's just too much to test, and I'm hoping that people will be wanting to take the, the chance. You know, we'll enter this in at like the lowest price point, like 20 bucks per syringe. And we'll have a picture of the mushroom in the wild if we have that picture. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll just post it up, no picture, tell you where it was found, what conditions it was found in, and if you want to take the chance, you take the chance. Uh, all we ask is that if you enjoy it, hate it, whatever, please let us know. But I want to open up our library to you guys. Um, and I, again, any untested strain will be at the lowest price point until it is tested. And at that point, if it's a good strain, it's going to move up in price. Um, but we'll basically do a jar of it, pull all of our syringes, and then that is all that will exist unless testing confirms that it is good. Otherwise, it will be in long-term storage and not to be brought out again. Um, unless it's backed by popular demand. The other side of this is we're going to go with a new release page. Anything that we have tested well, 
things that we have bred, things that we are like, this is a commercial game changer, is going to be going into a much higher price point. When you order it, you'll be getting two syringes per order, as well as two long-term storage slants to go with it. Uh, these will take a little bit longer to get out. We hope we're gonna have plenty of them made up right now for the next one that's coming out. And <clears throat> the hope with this, guys, is that It'll discourage a little bit of the resellers for me, uh, and it will allow me to to get excuse me value out of these strains that I'm creating and going through. The, the, getting a little bit of value out of these strains that we're creating, um, but also anything you know that's at that price point, we believe in. We are growing like crazy, and. We are made, like this is, these are strains that we believe in as commercial value. Anything else we want to keep at the lower value. Anything that's been released as a Mossy Peak Mushrooms original at the $30 price will stay that way. Um, and we are going to open up eventually slants to where, well, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, where any strain that we have can be bought in slant form, can be bought in 10 mil syringe, 60 mil syringe, and then we want to open up the entire wild genetics library to you guys. And then anything, like we said, that's going to be commercial game changer will go in the new release section. And I really think this is going to be a much better way to do it. There's going to be budget deals. There will be stuff like, oh, I really want this amazing strain. I'm going to go ahead and pay that for it. And I'm going to have long-term storage slants so I never have to buy it again and I'm gonna have syringes to run with it immediately so I get the convenience of syringes and the long-term viability of those slants. So, really guys, with that, I don't really have anything else. Samantha, you got anything else to offer? No? Well, I hope you guys like the images that uh, we're putting out and the blog post that we're doing with Dr. Solarian. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, are in the know on that and check that out. Uh, with that, y'all, just keep spawning that culture. Oh my gosh, you rocked me out with that a moment ago. You weren't so cute, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> you didn't mean to. You didn't mean to. <laughs>